Postman Pat and the Letter Puzzle. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white hat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Just look at those leaves, said Pat, turning brown already. We'll soon be thinking of Christmas. Pat was on his way with his letters. Jess was in his basket at Pat's side. He wasn't thinking of Christmas. He was thinking of rabbits. He had just seen two fat ones running across the school field. The road was busy in Greendale this morning. Pat met Sam Waldron with his mobile shop, Peter Fogg on his tractor, Dr Gilbertson in her Red Sierra, George Lancaster in his milk van, Ted Glenn driving the Greendale bus, and the mobile library. It's getting as busy as Pencaster, said Pat. And look at all these letters and packets. It's going to be a busy day. By the time Pat got to Greendale Farm, Mrs Pottage and the twins had got their new books from the mobile library. Mrs Pottage was in the basket chair by the fire and Katie and Tom were lying on the floor, all reading their books. Baby Paul was playing with his woolly monkey. Now then, said Pat, Noses in books at this time of day. What about the washing up? Oh, never mind the washing up, said Mrs Pottage. We've just got some lovely books from the library, and the washing up can wait till I finish this story. Well, you won't have time for these letters, said Pat. Just put them on the table, said Mrs Pottage. They can wait as well. And what are the twins busy reading? said Pat. They're very quiet this morning. Let's see. Horses. Both reading about horses. Don't you know why? said Katie. That's because... Because we've got, said Tom. A pony, said Katie. Of our very own, said Tom. And, said Katie, Peter's going to teach us to ride, said Tom. And it's lovely, said Katie. Come and see it, said Tom. Quick, said Katie. Come on, Pat. Well, said Pat. It's only in the bottom meadow, said Tom, behind the barn. It's not far, said Katie. All right, said Pat. Just a quick look. I mustn't stay long. I have such a lot of letters today. Pat put his full bag of letters down next to baby Paul and went to see the pony. The pony was just as lovely as Katie and Tom had said. It trotted across the field to them, and they gave it an apple. Pat stroked it. She's a real beauty, said Pat. But I'll have to be getting on with my letters now. Just as they were all going back into the house, they could hear Mrs Pottage saying, Oh no, Paul, what have you done? And what a sight they saw when they walked into the kitchen. Oh, no, said Pat and Katie and Tom together. There was a great big jumbled pile of letters next to Paul, and Paul had one of them in his mouth. He had opened Pat's bag and tipped all the letters out of it. I think he's trying to sort your letters for you, said Mrs Pottage. Oh, I am sorry, Pat. That's with me having my nose in a book. What a jumble. Don't worry, Pat. We'll all help to sort them out for you. Won't take long, if Paul doesn't help. Mrs Pottage lifted Paul off the floor and put him in his high chair. Then she gave him his milk. There, she said. That'll keep him out of mischief while we sort these letters out. I don't think Pat can deliver them the way Paul sorted them. They spread the letters out on the carpet, making a pile for each person in Greendale. All went well, and they had nearly finished when Katie said, Oh, look! 
At the bottom of the heap of letters was a little pile of torn up paper. You could see scraps of writing on the paper and one piece had half a stamp on it. He's torn up a letter, said Mrs. Pottage. Oh dear, I wonder if it's an important one. We can fit it together, said Katie. Like a jigsaw puzzle, said Tom. Don't worry, Pat, said Katie. We're good at jigsaws. We'll do it in a jiff. Mrs. Pottage gathered all the pieces carefully and put them on the table. They all gathered round and began to sort out the torn pieces of letter. It says something about coming on a visit here, said Tom. You're not supposed to read other people's letters, said Mrs. Pottage. We can sort it out without reading it, said Katie. What does this bit say, Mum? Hmm, can't make it out. Something about a pig, I think. But never mind what it says. Just fit the bits together. I wonder who it's for. They're not going to be very pleased to get their letter in tiny pieces. What a time they had fitting that letter together. They were getting on quite well when Peter Fogg called. A puff of wind came in with him and mixed all the pieces up again. So he stayed to help. Then Granny Dryden popped in and said, I'll give you a hand if I can only find me glasses. But they were in none of her pockets. Then she emptied her handbag out on the table to try and find them. And some of the pieces of letter got mixed up with handbag things. In the end, she sat down in the basket chair with a cup of tea. If that letter's for me, she said, you'll have to read it for me. I'd never be able to see it without my glasses. The Reverend Timms came with the parish magazine, and he stayed to help. The Lord will guide us, he said. I wonder if it's for me. It could be from my sister in Australia. Then he spotted Mrs. Pottage's new library books and sat down to read one of them. He wasn't much help after that. Miss Hubbard called in with a bottle of rhubarb wine. When she saw what they were doing, she said, Goodness me, you're doing it all wrong. Look here, I'll show you how to do it. You want to put them like this. Then someone jogged her elbow and the pieces got all mixed up again. She was so cross that she had to sit down with a cup of tea as well. Then baby Paul began to cry and Mrs. Pottage had to pick him up and nurse him till he went to sleep so she couldn't help with the letter. Oh dear, she said, we're not getting on very well, are we? And here's poor Pat getting later and later with his deliveries. It was true, there were so many people in that kitchen now, some helping and some not, that they were getting in each other's way. The letter still wasn't sorted out. Sam Waldron came in with a big box of groceries. Where shall I put this? he said. Hello, are you playing a game? Who's winning? Oh, excuse me, this is heavy. I'll have to put it down. And he put the box on the table, with quite a few pieces of letter under it. When he moved the box to the washing machine top, quite a lot of small leaves, bits of onion skin and squashed peas had joined the pieces of letter to be sorted. It might be that parts of the letter had stuck to the bottom of the box too. There was another knock at the door. Now who can that be? said Mrs. Pottage. We'll have old Greendale here soon. It was Dorothy Thompson. Good morning, she said. I've brought you two jars of my lemon cheese. I just made it yesterday. It's delicious. You must try it. It's lovely on toast. So she had to come in. And now more tea had to be made and lots and lots of toast so that everyone could try the lemon cheese. Dorothy Thompson's lemon cheese was famous all over Greendale and even in Pencaster. It was as delicious as it always was. The trouble is that you cannot eat toast and lemon cheese without getting sticky fingers. So that now the pieces of letter began to stick to people's fingers. When they wanted to put a piece of letter down in the place where it just fitted, 
they found that they couldn't. They had to shake their hands to get the paper off, and then it flew just anywhere. I think we'd better all go and wash our hands, said Mrs Pottage. We'll never do it whilst we're all sticky. Thank you, Dorothy. Just one more piece, then. So then they all had to wait their turn at the sink, or in the bathroom, to get unstickied. Whilst they were in the bathroom, Katie and Tom thought they would like to sail their boats in the bath, so they didn't do any more sorting after that. Then came another knock at the door. I'm going to lock that door, said Mrs Pottage. But it was Ted Glenn with the grandfather clock. Mrs Pottage had been waiting years for Ted to mend that clock, so she certainly wasn't going to ask him to come another day with it. It might be years and years before he brought it again. Everyone had to move to make room for the clock to be carried in. It was so big. Even the table had to be lifted out of the way. It was then that it tipped right over and spilt all the pieces of letter on the floor. What's all that paper on the floor? said Ted. That, said Pat, is one of my letters. We've been trying half the morning to get it fitted together. Oh, no, it's not. Well, it is, but it's my letter as well, cried Mrs Pottage, kneeling on the floor, looking at a bigger piece of paper. Look, I saw this when we moved the table. It has my name on it, and I know the writing. It was his Nana's letter that Paul tore up. What you need now is a spot of glue said Ted. He took a big tube of glue out of his overall pocket. And a nice piece of card. Here, the lid of this grocery box will do. Then, if you spread some glue on the card, like this, you can stick the pieces of letter down as you find them. That way, they'll not keep blowing away, or getting dropped, or sticking to fingers, or whatever. Ted said Pat, you're a genius. Doing what Ted had told them, they soon had the letter pieced together, and now Mrs Pottage could read it at last. Oh, she said, Nana's coming to tea tomorrow and bringing Auntie Kate, Auntie Pamela and Great Aunt Sylvia. Gracious me, I haven't seen all the aunts at once for years and years. I'll have to make a cake and scones and biscuits and fresh bread. I'm sorry, folks. I'll have to speed you on your way. Can't have a kitchen full of visitors when I'm baking. And I'll have to be on my way with all these letters, said Pat. It's a good thing there's only one letter like that. I'm glad it was mine that he tore up, said Mrs Pottage. But I'm sorry we've made you so late, Pat. Oh, it's all right, said Pat. I'll manage. I always do. Whatever happens, the Greendale folk will understand. One by one, they all went on their way, leaving Mrs Pottage to get her kitchen to rights and make a start on the baking. The next day, after the aunts had been to tea, Mrs Pottage called round at Pat's house. She brought a big tin of cakes and scones and homemade biscuits. Anyone who has tasted Mrs Pottage's baking will know what a treat that was. She wins prizes for her cakes at Pencaster Show every single year. This is just to make up for all that trouble you had with the letters, she said. Delicious, said Pat. Thank you very much. Pat and Sarah and young Julian had a real feast with that tin of good things. It lasted for days. I'll tell you what, said Sarah. Next time my mum sends a letter, I'll save it. Then you can give it to Paul. You never know. He might tear it up. 